Hello everyone, it's Clint. Welcome to Sweetcast. And uh, I want to talk about continuing a series and uh, basically the inevitability of having to do a reprint. Um, I think this is a topic that's going to be coming up a lot more. When I think about it, there are actually not that many creators that I know of that are doing Indiegogo uh, series that have run into the issue of needing to do a reprint. Um, and so that's sort of the question here. So I've got Graveyard Shift here. You can see I've got Graveyard Shift 1, 2, and 3. And that's because I have the necessity of reprinting 1 and 2. Um, I can speculate here a little bit on behalf of Graveyard Shift, but uh, I'm obviously not an insider. So uh, my speculation is <laughs> that one of two things would have happened. One is you print to demand on number one and on number two so therefore when you're out of demand the book's done and then when you want to go to number three you're going to have to print you got to address this uh, number two would be uh, printing just enough of number one to last you through a number two campaign uh, if you are somehow smart enough to know exactly how many you were going to sell in the second campaign uh, if you could project those numbers perfectly and then say, hey, on the third one, this is the perfect time for me to reprint one and two together for new readers so that you're still only being required to buy two separate books as opposed to three. Um, my guess is it was the former. Uh, that's the way that it probably went, though I have heard that John Malin actually uh, burned extra copies that he had and destroyed. So he, he sold these. He overprinted enough to make sure he'd have enough and that he burned the remaining uh, uh, books, which seems crazy to me uh, because <laughs> those books became valuable, not in the sense that they were worth so much money. And I'm sort of thinking of my own experience here, print, reprinting one and two. Um, they were valuable to me to have copies <laughs> because you have to have something for new readers to get into. And so um, in my case, I had to reprint one and two and it's actually, you know, a fairly thick collection. Like when I look at it, that's a, a nice size graphic novel. This is probably, you know, uh, you could compare this to a graphic novel that you'd buy from any major publisher other than I actually think the print quality is a lot better than what you're going to be getting from Marvel or DC or IDW or Dark Horse. Uh, it just, it's better, it's better paper. It's got like a nice matte cover with the spot gloss and the foil and all that jazz. And so to me, I called this the mask market version because this is this would be my entry point into the rest of the market in theory. So let's say you're whatever, Joe Blow, and you're on Amazon.com looking for graphic novels and comics, and you run across a book that costs, you know, $20, $25 but it's a thick 120 page plus book, then it, you know, that's pretty reasonable for what you're paying in that price range from any other publisher. So, you know, you don't really have any reservations of getting in on the book because it's priced similarly, it's competitive. You're actually competing on price with comic books from any other publisher. Now, I realize that many people would say, well, it's not about competing on price. It's about making the best quality product. And it's not, you know, weird, uh, you know, political stuff or whatever. Yes, those are all points that you could compete on. But eventually, I think if you're doing your job right as a comic book creator, you're eventually going to reach out and get to the people that are not early adopters, that are more conscientious about their dollars spent on comic books and they're going to be a little bit more frugal. Therefore, they're going to be looking for things that are in that price range. So I think that this initial reprint, you know, could have gone in two different ways, right? Uh, on Graveyard Shift here, they could have printed, uh, re reprinted number one, and they could have reprinted number two when they needed to. Or there's this version where you combine them together. You know, it's fairly, uh, you know, good sized graphic novel, again, competitive to what you would see in the market of comic books from anywhere else. Um, but 
now you could take this and actually sell it anywhere and you could sell it to late adopters as an entry point into the series whereas you know one of these smaller ones it just seems super thin if we're talking about brand new readers that don't care about anything else you know any they don't care about the crowdfunding campaign they don't care about the creators whatever it is they're just going to look and say hey graveyard shift this book looks really interesting and cool oh i like the artwork how thick is it what's the price point those are all considerations so anyway just something uh to note there's going to be more of this coming up and uh, I was a little bit worried because some, some people were said, you know, is it possible that people are going to be upset about you reprinting one and two together? Is that going to make people upset that bought one and two and now they realize they could have waited and got one and two together in a single book? And I think the answer is a resounding no. Nobody's going to care. And that's because they get it first. Are, is anybody upset that they went to the movie theater and watched a movie and paid whatever, $20 to see a movie uh, when they could have waited for it to show up on a streaming service and watched it for basically free. Is anybody upset about that? No, it's just that's part of the process. That's how books are created and, and uh, you know, just distributed, like or that's films rather. Uh, books are, are the same way. People are pretty used to that happening. So I actually think, I strongly believe in this, that part of the reason people are backing crowdfunding campaigns is because they're hoping to make something out of it. They're hoping that it doesn't just become one obscure book that you buy on a crowdfunding site that nobody else has. Yeah, it's going to start that way. And maybe there are a lot of books that are going to end that way. But for me, at least the hope is that you're going to back a campaign and you're going to really hope that that campaign becomes something. You hope that there's a franchise at the end of it that they continue to make a series, that they expand things, that it becomes uh, part of conversations wherever comics are talked about. Uh, and the conversation is about the content of those books. To me, that's what excites me. And I would love for that to be the case, not you know necessarily the culture war stuff. That could be a footnote you know, in how some of these comic books are sold or where creators came from. Uh, but ultimately, like I'd love people to be talking about all these books like they would about Spawn, you know, like they would about Spider-Man. You know, it's less about the creators and the origins and more about the content, like what what is in these stories that's worth talking about. So uh, just some of my thoughts there. There are going to be more preprints coming, and I think that this is uh, a smart way to go by no means uh you know this has more to do with great minds thinking alike than it does uh a plan for how to print books but i suspect there are probably a lot of people out there that'll run into the same problem of hey i run at it, ran out of number ones how am i going to continue to get new readers into the series besides saying hey it's locked sorry new new readers you're not allowed in we're already past that phase we're going to move on without you uh, so it's a problem that needs to be addressed. The other way of solving it would be, yeah, just reprint one, reprint two, and they're separate books. And as a series goes, as a series continues, new readers are going to either have to buy each of these books or the series at some point will have to be um, standalone enough or almost like it's rebooted so that the stories will just not need any of this content. But I think to do traditional uh, comic books, at least to fill that way where it's a long ongoing series, you're going to have to have a way to make them all available to new readers. Uh, so I'd love to know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Uh, I think this is an interesting topic. It's just like, what are the next steps for crowdfunding? So let me know. Don't forget to back Downcast on Indiegogo. I'm going to be shipping this out very soon. It's at the printer. They said that the covers were being printed. And the interiors, I think, are on, in line to be printed. So I'm hoping to be able to fulfill this campaign soon. <laughs> That's the goal. Uh, probably, like, I'm, I'm talking, like, the next few weeks, perhaps. Two or three weeks, I'm hoping. Uh, Fatal has seen some amazing progress. I put out an update for the campaign on that. And Alterna Comics is also launching a campaign if you're interested in following Downcast through the single-issue format, which is a super fun way to read comics. 
uh, if that's your cup of tea. So thanks so much, and I will see you in another video.